Hey, everybody. It's Katie and Dana. We are back with, good morning. We are back with what we like to call TNN, the neighborhood news. Yes, we are. Happy Monday, you guys. We are back after a week off. And yeah, that's right. Last week was a holiday. It was a holiday. So we are back and ready to talk about a Midwest feel in Gilbert, Arizona. Let's do this. This is one of my favorite neighborhoods. So I'm so excited that this is on today. And I I wonder if I'll learn something new. So I'm going to sit back, relax, and let (laughs) Porter Dana take the wheel. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show today, you guys. We are talking about the very amazing town called Agrotopia. It is a town. It It really is is like a little town. You you almost... (laughs) could just stay there and not really go anywhere else and you'd be good. And that's why I wanted to say that because it is a true like Midwest feel in Gilbert, Arizona. It's so unique. And I'll talk about driving through this neighborhood. However, um, so Agritopia was the Johnston's family project. And so the name stands for agri meaning um, for the land's farming heritage, and then Topia for the perfect community. And that it is. It really is. And so Joe Johnston really wanted there to be a relationship between the name and the neighborhood. So that was one of his big visions for this, this whole area. I would say and he nailed it. He nailed it. <laughs> oh my gosh, did he nail it. And so this 166 acre community uh, was built on this farm and really wanted to honor their agriculture. And so, yeah, he wanted to keep the farm, the heart of the neighborhood. And he did. Oh, it is. When you drive through there, uh, well, I'll let you get to it, but the apple. I know (laughs) you just love to talk about it. (laughs) No. (laughs) And so you guys, so in 1988, Uh, the Johnston family entered into an agreement with Scott Holmes and his vision. Like I said, he wanted to honor God and the, and the area's agricultural heritage by creating a neighborhood really reflective of the Midwestern small towns where it's neighborly and people want to be social. Yeah. And they are. When I was driving through there, there was a party going on. And it was all the neighbors. They, the kids were running across the street. Everybody, you know, had a beer in their hand. They just, everybody was outside. And it was, yeah, it, you could feel that social, you know, aspect of that neighborhood, even just from being in your car, driving through that neighborhood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that extends to, which I'm sure you'll get to, the other very popular public spots that are located within that neighborhood too. Yes. So when developing and designing this neighborhood, they came across two challenges, which I thought were really interesting. One was working with the Gilbert Fire Department. So the Gilbert Fire Department was completely opposed to the project's skinny streets and their skinny roundabouts. Ah. So it was only after Scott Holmes agreed to build sprinkler systems in every home that the fire department signed off on their planned development. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the second challenge was to maintain that Midwestern feel. Their design um, had grass lawns and what they call planting strips in between the street and the sidewalks. And in Arizona, it's illegal to plant grass grass strips in between the residentials right of way because the amount of water that is required to sustain the grass. Oh, interesting. It really interesting. So they had to completely amend Gilbert street standards so that they were able to complete this project the way that they wanted to and keep that Midwestern feel with those, those grass planting strips. Interesting. And it's so cute. It is. It is. So let me share my screen, you guys, and we'll talk about all the restaurants and what's going on in that neighborhood, because there is so much going on, you guys. (laughs) It's pretty It's one of my favorite restaurants, too. Did you eat there? 
I did not eat there, but I walked around. Um, I walked through the farms. I went over and explored the epicenter that is ready to be open here. I know the residents are moving in next month. So, um, yeah. Oops, yeah. we're looking at the islands. Um, so oops. hold on. Oops, oops, oops. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just uh, expand. It's right here. So where the red dot is so you guys can see. We can't like, see that. So all we oh, can yeah. see is like folders, your folders, the islands oh, history. So I'm you, sorry. You might have clicked on the wrong screen when you share. I oh. do that sometimes. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys. Hold on. Let That's me stop okay. sharing. Hold on one second. Sorry for all my sniffling. I'm just getting <laughs> over a cold. <laughs> I apologize, you guys. Hold on one moment. Let me get to Google Maps. That's very strange that that happened today. Um, yeah, there is a restaurant called the Farm, uh, Joe's Farm Grill, mm -hmm. and it's super cool, you guys. It was actually the Johnston family home at one point. Oh, no um, kidding. Yes, this was their home. So they converted that. So, oh, that's cool. Um, yep. I'm, I apologize, you guys. Let me get there. That's okay. And I believe that that is the same Joe that owned Joe's Barbecue in downtown Gilbert. Ooh. Yeah. I bet it well, is. Well, fun fact. Fun fact. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, are the burgers where you what you need to go and eat at the restaurant, Katie, right? Burgers? I've had everything. <laughs> My absolute favorite there is, if they still have it, I, I want to say it's called the Cobb Salad. Um, oh my gosh, is it so delish. Okay, we see a map now. Here Can we you go. see this? Mm hmm Okay. Awesome. So it's located off the 202, kind of tucked in right here between Higley and Ray Road. And this is it. Super convenient to Top Golf main event, the 202, Cosmo Dog Park, like <laughs> Williams Field High School, so conveniently located. Santan Village. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, and we're going to talk all about this, but this is the area, you guys. Yep. It's really conveniently located. So let's look at some homes, shall we? Yes, we shall. Did you find any? No, I, I did find three that are ones pending and two are under contract accepting backups. So I wanted to just show those so that you could see some photos of the homes, what they look like, the neighborhood. Um, and then there's a property listed right across the street in Lionsgate that I'll show as well. Um, and then two just north uh, as well. So we can kind of just see what's around there. But Katie, I know you said homes don't come up for sale very often in this neighborhood, do they? No, no. It's always been highly sought after. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say Agritopia was started in 2005, I think. Is when um, it was 2001, they started One? development. Yep. Okay. Um, I think a lot of them are 05 builds, but I could be a little off on that. It's been a minute since I've had a listing in there, but it's always been highly sought after, even in the downturn of the market where you could get one of these homes for like a ridiculous price because everything had crashed, you know? I mean, I wish I would have bought four of them, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, it's always just been really sought after. People love it in there. And, and you'll see when you start looking at the design of the homes, how they're set up, the floor plans, um, the materials that were used. It's just very, very well done. Scott did a, Scott Holmes did a really nice job. Yeah, they offered 11 different floor plans and anywhere from Crass, Craftsman, California Bungalow, Spanish Eclectic, Northern European Revival, and then traditional or Arizona Territorial, which is a little bit more farmhouse look, ranch style homes. Yeah. And then there's basements in there too, which is cool. Yeah. So again, there's 452 homes in this area. 288 are classic models and 164 are cottage models. And they all range from 1300 up to the classic homes at 10,000 square feet. And yes, yeah, some have basements, which adds about 2000 square feet and more bedrooms. Oh, yeah. um, but this one, so this one here is, um, it's again, under contract, but accepting backups. And I just wanted to spotlight it because I absolutely think it's gorgeous. Um, listed at 530. 
and it is, I mean, so many of these have been remodeled. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that's the case because it's been a while now. It's been years now, but when they were first built, they were really classy too. Mm -hmm. So what the materials that were used in the majority of them, I mean, I guess if you just went super basic, then no, but they had some really classy upgrades. So you can kind of get a feel for this is yeah. your yard. Yeah. So, the, so these are, so there's two different types. So they, you've got your larger um, homes and then you've got, you know, the smaller square footage homes, which is what we're looking at right now with the small side yard. And the small side yard homes are really cool because they've got this big green belt um, that they face. So, so homes on each side of the street, garages are in the back and they face this green belt, which is really cool because when you look out your front, it just seems like, you know, you just, you're just seeing greenery and some other cute houses. So it's not like there's a street and stuff in front of you, which, which I like the setup of, of this particular product. Um, and then you go to the homes that have the larger lots, the fuller backyards and looks like we'll look at, yep. Yeah, pistachio. looks like we'll look at that here. So yeah, both of these are 2005 builds. Hey, not bad. Not, not bad, bad memory. <laughs> You've got a great memory. <laughs> you still got it, Katie. <laughs> Even so sick. This- I still got it. <laughs> so this home is, um, it's pending listed at 900,000, three bed, three bath, um, just under 3,700 square feet. Like you said, the year bet was 2005 and look at the lot size, just over 10,000. Yeah. I think you had mentioned, and and I'm not sure if it was clear when you had mentioned the 10,000 square foot figure, that Mm -hmm. is not the square footage of the home. Um, I don't believe there are any 10,000 square foot homes in there. Oh, I'm sorry if I misspoke on that. Yeah, no, that's okay. I just wanted to make it clear. I knew what you meant. Um, Those are the, they are larger square foot lots than the product that we just looked at. So I just want to make that clear. Yes. No, thank you for that. Yeah. Anywhere from uh, 7,000, I think is, you know, in in those more classic homes up to 10,000 square foot lots. Yeah. So which is a nice size in the middle of the city, you know? Oh yeah. And so I really wanted to show and showcase this home because it, it talk, it shows, you know, that grass area that we were talking about. And when I drove through, you could see leaves on the ground. I'm not kidding you. I lived in Chicago for seven years. I felt like I was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. This is just it's reminiscent of that. And these, this home is again, just really, really nicely done. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some of these have guest casitas too. Um, and you can get up to a four car garage. A few of these properties have four car. Yeah. And the HOA doesn't allow full home rentals. Um, but you can rent out your casita. You can't rent out the entire home that is not allowed in this area, but yes, it's owner occupied. That's right. Yep. This looks like the basement. The game room, extra bedrooms downstairs. The basement could add up to three extra bedrooms for you. Yeah. Let me get to the backyard in the casita. Nice, spacious master. Beautiful. Beautiful master. Bright. Porch off the backyard. Again, Adirondack chair, seating area. Yeah. They do. Oh, oh my garden. <laughs> they have <cute>. a garden. <laughs> and then they'll just showcase some of the amenities in that area as well. So the tennis courts, um, you know, we'll talk about the, the dog park here in a second, because that's got some really interesting history. And then this home, everybody, is located across the street in Lionsgate. So I wanted to just showcase this as well. Not that you're not in that area, however it is right across, directly across the street from Joe's Farm Grill and the farm and the coffee house and bar, bar and one or bar none, <laughs> however you would like to pronounce it. Um, and, and Lionsgate is actually a community we should do um, a TNN on because it's a pretty cool community also. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah, I know we talked about it. So I wanted to make sure we, we did bring it up today that we will spot like this uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, you guys. So awesome. We'll put it on the map for you. So this home is listed at 
454,500, three bed, two and a half bath, just under 15 square feet, built in 2007. And let's take a look at some of the photos and share. It's a little, they got a little basketball area in the back. Oh, cute. I love the backsplash. I love the backsplash on here. I feel like we're seeing more and more of that like mosaic look. In some I of put the that kitchens. in my house. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I love it that much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it. That's true. You haven't been. Oh, once I'm better. <laughs> Soon enough. <laughs> yes. Soon enough. So um, nice, you know, pavers, outside area. So yeah, I wanted to share that. And then there's also just north of this area, <clears throat> excuse me, in the um, Rancho Corona um, neighborhood. So it's, it's literally on the other side of the 202 here are two properties as well. One listed at 525 and then one listed at 736. Ooh, let's look at the 736 one real quick. Absolutely. I'm just curious. Three oh. car garage with a pool. Let's look at the detail. Yeah. Four bed, three bath, just under 3,500 square feet, built in 2000, just under 8,000 square feet on the lot, uh, three car garage. That's so nice to have. That extra garage is really great. It's great for storage or, you know, if you do have a third car, awesome for you. Um, but having that extra storage and then being able to park, you know, both your, your car and your, your spouse's car is awesome. Yes. So pool. And nice. Oh, I love the wainscoting in the dining room. It's cute. Very cute. So again, this is so convenient to this Agrotopia neighborhood. Again, reason why I wanted to spotlight those two homes. Yeah. And just because you don't live in Agrotopia doesn't mean you can't go to Joe's Farm Grill. Doesn't mean you can't go to the coffee shop. Like they'll still let you play. <laughs> yes, they will. They absolutely still will. And also in there too, um, I don't know when you were there last, Katie, but they have built that new generations. Uh, it's called Generations. So it's the state-of-the-art senior living facility. Mm, yes, that's, yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's all done in that Spanish eclectic style. Um, and so let me, I did uh, have this on here as well, you guys. So I would like to show you just what this does offer. So if you're, again, it's uh, 62 years of age or older. And again, just independent living, assisted living, there are 118 units in this facility. So if you're of that age, um, this, this uh, website right here, livegenerationsagrotopia.com is where you can go and take a tour, learn all about uh, the floor plans, what the cost is and whatnot. What a great so, place to retire. Dang. Ooh, I'm telling you, I know, so just, you know, they really promote, you know, the active lifestyle not having a car, being able to walk, ride your bike, um, yeah. have, an, uh, have a dog, take it to Cosmo Dog Park, which I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. <laughs> Wait, how old do you have to be to live there? I can't be too far off. <laughs> I was like calculating. I'm like, okay, I've got, <laughs> I mean, we're not going to talk about my age today. Um, but they're also finalizing uh, this epic center, Agrotopia, which is, there, there'll be two four-story buildings with more than 49,000 square feet of ground floor retail. And then the Tyler is the apartment building right there with 322 units. And they actually have their tenants who have reserved a unit moving in next month. So February of 2022. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, just a lot going on in this neighborhood. It's uh Oh yeah. And it's Gilbert, nice. Gilbert is Gilbert. like the map, right? So let's talk about that too, because Gilbert is voted the best city for remote workers, third best city to buy a house by Wallet Hub in 2021. Like in the whole nation? In the whole nation. Dang. Yep. 
So again, if you are, I know we have a lot of folks that move out here from a lot of different states, the Midwest. So if you're looking to have that feel, this is your neighborhood. Yeah. It really is. It's also, Gilbert is voted the ninth best city to raise a family by Wallet Hub in 2021. And then the 12th safest city in the United States. Wow. See, we're on the map. I knew it. <laughs> we're making waves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're making a name for ourselves. And then let's talk about Cosmo Dog Park. So for those of you who are, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a dog mom. So that is me. So me too. I know you are Katie. I know. Um, so, the, so super cool. So the name, um, comes from the, the canine. He was the first canine of the Gilbert police department. Oh, and his name was Cosmo. His name Cute. was Cosmo. So this is a 17 acre park. I'm going to show you guys some pictures. Oh, I really thought this was awesome. And it is designed, yes, for humans, but really for your dog. And the dog can, they can swim, right? They can. So it is one of the only dog parks in the country that has a dog beach. And you know what? So I have this 10 year old European German shepherd who, you know, usually German shepherds are not water dogs. My dog swims all summer long. So she would love this. I'm going to have to take her here. Look at this. Oh, how cute. <laughs> so check Aww. out this dog park. Even if you don't live in this area. And they also have an area that they mentioned too for more timid dogs that might be a little bit more skittish, um, you know, if you're not quite sure of the other animals. So again, they, they, I think they, they really hit all fronts w- with this area and, and making sure it's all family, you know, neighborhood friendly for kids, but also for your, your pets, you know, they're part of your family. Totally. Oh my gosh. This picture you just put up. Okay. So if you're hungry, hungry, um, you need to go here and have a burger. So Joe's farm grill is where it's at. And like I said, this restaurant used to be their home, their family home. You know, I wondered, cause it's, it's really shaped like that. You know, I've been there a whole bunch of times and, and I just always wondered, well, where did this building come from? But now it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to spot like that. They've also been featured on food networks, diners, drive-ins and dives. Yep. So definitely want to check, check that out. And then the coffee shop. I also, again, I just, I, like I said, I just love this area. I could have spent days here. They have the awesomest breakfast. They, this is the best coffee shop ever. Yeah. So this used to be their tractor shed. <laughs> and the coffee shop was featured on Cupcake Wars. Oh, no And kidding. they won. And they won. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and they're open for breakfast and lunch. And so, yes, go in there, have breakfast, have a latte. And if you can get your hands on a red velvet or apparently their cinnamon roll cupcake is to die for. No kidding. Well, I'll have to try. Yep. And then they have one other facility there. You can call it either bar, barn one or bar none. Either one is acceptable, but this is a big silver. It's shaped like an airplane hanger. Um, and it actually was constructed in the 1950s from sheet metal retired from World War II aircraft. Oh, hey, that's cool. Hey, I know. And so you can go in there. It's a, it's a craftsman show. So you can, you know, go in and shop local where, you know, these, these folks make and sell their own handcrafted goods. Again, just really, really unique stuff going on in this area, you guys. And it's cute. Everything is so farmhouse, cute deco, like that whole look, you know, so cute. I know. And so, yeah, amenities we talked about, there's restaurants, there's the dog park, Santan Village is not far from there. The ice, um, AZ Ice Gilbert. So the skating center is close to their main event. I haven't been to main event. And after doing some research, I was like, okay, they have laser tag, gravity ropes, a story room, rock climbing, karaoke. Bowling, mini yeah. glow in the dark. <laughs> it it's awesome. 
um, golf courses, lots of golfing that is close to this neighborhood. Um, schools. So they do have Gilbert Christian School right in Agritopia. Yeah. It's, it's private. Um, so it's K through eight. And then you mentioned too, Katie, um, uh, Williams Field High School. It's not far from ASU Polytech campus. Um, Ch- Chandler Gilbert Community College. Uh, again, really close, 15 miles to the airport, also five miles to the Phoenix Gateway Airport. So a little bit smaller um, airport right there. Um, and then some state state parks, Lost Dutchman State Park is 25 miles. Usury Mountain Regional Park isn't far. Santan Regional Mountain Park is 36 miles. The Gila River Resort and Casino is 20 miles. So the new Gilbert Park too isn't very far from there. The new Gilbert Park is not far from there. Yeah. I'll, I'll add that link. So I'll add some of these links to um, to our show here today. That's a sweet park too. I just went uh, for a birthday party for one of my kid's friends. And um, it's just, it's just changed even since I was there, maybe before COVID. So. Okay. They have baseball. <laughs> Everything and- is before COVID. It's like BC <laughs> now means before COVID. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, you guys, again, just really keeping this neighborhood, you know, family friendly, social and in harmony with the agricultural heritage of what Joe Johnston wanted to, to make it all about. He killed it. He killed it. He killed it. You guys have to go and check it out. Totally. Spend the day. Spend the day. All right, reporter Dana, we appreciate all of this awesomeness and those of you out there, do us a favor, flip on over to our YouTube channel. It is at Team Evo AZ. That's our handle on all social media. Give us a like, give us a follow. Let us know what you think about the show. Um, we've been really enjoying doing this every week, but we'd love a little bit of feedback from you guys too. We get it here and there, but we'd like a little bit more. Um, definitely follow us. There are so many neighborhoods in the Valley. Like, I don't even know. I can't even assign a number to it. So we're going to come up with a number. very long time. <laughs> Probably between now and the time that we end up going to that retirement resort, we're going to be doing the TNN. (laughs) Check Katie and I out in uh, the Generations Retirement Community. Right? (laughs) Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Monday. We'll see you next week. Bye.